Hello, welcome to lecture 12 of Electrical Circuits 1. Last lecture, we started talking about source transformations and maximum power transfer. I want to reiterate the final results of that really quickly at the beginning of this lecture. After that, I want to do a little bit more talking about our maximum power transfer result. I think that needs to be derived so that you see where it comes from. Following that, I'm going to do a quick Thevenin and Norton theorem example and use some of this stuff to incorporate into this example. Then that will be the end of our Thevenin and Norton theorem section of the course. We'll start talking about operational amplifiers. Related educational materials are in sections 1.7.5 and operational amplifiers start in section 1.8. Okay, I want to recap really quickly our results relative to source transformation and its use in circuit analysis. From Thevenin and Norton's theorems last time, we saw that any voltage source which is in series with a resistance can be represented as a current source in parallel with the same resistance. So if in our electrical circuit we have this configuration of a voltage source V in series with a resistance R, we can transform that into a current source in parallel with the same resistance. The value of the current source is just this voltage divided by this resistance. The converse is also true. If I have a current source in parallel with some resistance R, I can always represent that as a voltage source in series with the same resistance where the voltage source value V is R times I. Also last time we presented a result relative to the maximum power transfer that can be delivered to a load. If I have some load resistance R sub L that I want to give the most power that I possibly can to, what I need to do is choose a value of R sub L that is equivalent to the Thevenin resistance of the equivalent Thevenin circuit that you're connecting this to. Okay, I stated that result rather Baldly, I didn't go into detail as to why that is, you should be wondering why that is. So I'm going to actually derive this result for you next. Okay, I want to provide a fairly brief derivation of this result. If I have some load resistance connected to a Thevenin equivalent circuit, the voltage applied to the load is V sub L. This is just a simple voltage divider. So V sub L is the total voltage VOC times this resistance R sub L over the sum of R sub L plus RTH. Now, for a resistive power dissipation, my delivered power is the load voltage squared over R sub L. P is equal to V squared over R. If I substitute this result in for V sub L, P sub L is VOC squared times this term squared divided by this R sub L. Take a close look at this result. If R sub L goes to zero, okay, then I have a zero in the numerator here, I deliver no power. If R sub L gets very, very big, I have something that's like R sub L squared in the denominator. Again, this result goes to zero. So I'm looking at something that's going to start out at zero for low load resistances, increase, and then come back down to zero for high load resistances. And actually, if I plot this equation, I get something that looks like this. What I want to do is figure out what P max, the maximum amount of power I can deliver is, and what value of R, R max, will provide that power delivery. So I want to find the load resistance that is R max and determine what power is delivered to the load under those circumstances. Okay, now let's look at finding the value of R sub L that will allow the maximum amount of power to be delivered to the load resistance. In general, when trying to find a maximum or a minimum, you take the derivative of the function and set it equal to zero. The load power is a function of multiple things. We need to take a partial derivative of the power with respect to the load resistance in order to determine the maximum of the power with respect to a change in the load resistance. If I take my previous expression for the power delivered to the load 
and do a partial derivative with respect to the load resistance there, I end up with this rather nasty expression. It probably deserves a couple of lines of explanation. This is a function of a function of r sub l in the numerator over a function of r sub l in the denominator. If you recall your basic calculus, the derivative with respect to x of u over v is 1 over v times the derivative of u with respect to x minus u over v squared times the derivative of v with respect to x. Now if u is v o c squared times r sub l and v is r l plus r t h squared, the derivative of this guy with respect to r sub l is 1 over r sub l plus r t h squared times the derivative of this with respect to r sub l, which is just v o c squared. This expression here becomes minus u over v squared, which is v o c squared times r sub l is my numerator u, over the square of r sub l plus r t h squared. So squaring a squared gives us, us the fourth power. That gets multiplied with, by the derivative of this with respect to r sub l, which is 2 times the quantity r l plus r th times the derivative of what's inside here, which is just 1. Now, if I put these both over a common denominator, I need to multiply this top and bottom by rl plus rth squared, which makes this numerator voc squared times rl plus rth squared minus a voc squared, which can also be pulled out. 2 times RL times the quantity RL plus RTH, and everything's over RL plus RTH to the fourth. Now I'm going to erase this so that I have a little bit of room to work when I do my next bullet point. Now we want to set this expression here to 0. Now one potential way of doing that is to set R sub L equal to the negative of RTH. Then this term becomes 0, this term becomes 0, that has kind of a mathematical unpleasantness associated with it in that the denominator also becomes 0, so I have 0 over 0, which isn't all that great. The other bigger problem is that the load resistance would have to become negative. I don't necessarily know how to choose a load resistor that's negative, so I don't think that's a good solution. So what I'm going to do is take this numerator, set it equal to 0, solve for that, see where else that leads us. The, both terms in the numerator have an RL plus an RTH in them. I can divide that guy out, which makes this first term an RL plus RTH. This second term becomes a minus 2R sub L. This term has been divided out, so setting this equal to 0 just means that the numerator is 0. So r sub l minus 2 r sub l becomes a minus r sub l plus an rth is equal to 0. Therefore, if I choose r sub l equal to rth, I satisfy this equality. My load resistance is also a physically reasonable number. So I'm going to choose my load resistance to be my Thevenin equivalent resistance in order to get maximum power delivered to the load. Now let's determine the maximum value of the power delivered to the load. How much power can I actually get to the load if I choose the load resistance equal to the Thevenin resistance? My previous expression for the power delivered to the load was VOC squared over RL times this quantity RL over RL plus TH squared. Let me simplify that by canceling out this RL with one of the RLs in the numerator. That becomes a VOC squared times RL over RL plus RTH squared. If RL is equal to RTH, this becomes VOC squared times RTH over 2 RTH quantity squared. One of the RTHs in the denominator will cancel with the one in the numerator. This becomes then VOC squared over 4R 
th, the 4 is this 2 squared. So the maximum power that we actually deliver is the square of the open circuit voltage divided by 4 times the Thevenin resistance. Okay, let's do another maximum power transfer example. This will give us some opportunities to apply our maximum power theorem results along with some practice on Thevenin's theorem. So we have this circuit and we want to determine the load resistance which absorbs the maximum power from the circuit. Okay. Remember the load resistance that gets the maximum power is the Thevenin resistance of this circuit. If you calculate this Thevenin resistance, that's the value you want to choose. Notice that for this step, you do not need to determine an open circuit voltage. However, on part B, to determine the actual maximum power that gets delivered to this load under these conditions, you need an open circuit voltage, so you need to essentially end up with the entire Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, I think I've done a couple of examples of this kind of thing already, so why don't you give this a shot, see how it goes for you, then you can come back and watch me work through the problem. We've removed the load from our circuit. We're now looking into the load terminals to determine the Thevenin equivalent resistance. In order to get our sub th, we kill our independent sources. Therefore, this current source becomes an open circuit. This resistor retains its 2 ohm value. This voltage source becomes a short circuit. This 2 ohm resistance retains its value. The 1 ohm resistance remains where it is. We also have a 1 ohm resistance bypassing both of these 2 ohm resistances. And this is the Thevenin resistance that we want to determine. Now looking across these two terminals, the 1 ohm resistor connects directly across those terminals. This 2 ohm resistor, notice now that this is all a single node. So this 2 ohm resistor actually connects this node and this node directly, so it is a parallel combination with the 1 ohm and the 2 ohm resistor. This entire path through here also connects this terminal to this terminal. So I have a 1 ohm resistor in series with a 2 ohm resistor. This total combination becomes 3 ohms, so I have a 1 ohm resistor in parallel with a 2 ohm resistor, in parallel with a 3 ohm resistor, so RTH is 1 over 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. That is 0 0.54 ohms. That is the value of load resistance, which will transfer the maximum power to the load. Now for part B, to determine the actual power which is delivered to the load under those circumstances, I need the open circuit voltage. So I need to replace my sources and find VOC. Um, if I do mesh analysis with this, then I get a mesh loop here and a mesh loop here, so I have two equations and two unknowns. If I do nodal analysis, this node is constrained to this one, this is independent, this is independent. I also get two equations and two unknowns. So there isn't a big gain between mesh analysis and node analysis. However, if I do nodal analysis, I'll get a voltage directly, which will be VOC. I don't have to find VOC from a current. It may be a little bit less work. So let me use nodal analysis to do this. I'm going to choose this as my reference node. If this is 0 volts, this voltage here is constrained to 3 volts. That leaves these as independent voltages, let's call this V sub X and this V sub Y. Now if we do KCL at X, I have one amp going into that node, currents going into the node I will treat as negative. We have current going through this resistor here, so we have V sub X minus V sub Y over 1 ohm plus current going through this 2 ohm resistor, which is V sub X minus 3 over 2 ohms. That sums to 0. 
Now I do KCL at Y. The current through this one ohm resistor is just V sub Y minus zero over one ohm. The current through this one ohm resistor here is now going to be V sub Y minus V sub X over one ohm. plus the current through this 2 ohm resistor, which is V sub Y minus 3 volts over 2 ohms, that is equal to 0. This is two equations in two unknowns. I can solve those for V sub X and V sub Y. V sub Y is just VOC, so solving this, V sub Y is equal to the open circuit voltage. That turned out to be... 1.73 volts. Now my power is VOC squared over 4RTH, which is 1.73 squared over 4 times 0 0.54. That's the amount of power in watts that I deliver to my load. Let's do one final example relative to Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, and now source transformations. I want to find the Norton equivalent circuit for the circuit that I just looked at in example one. Now I can go back to my original circuit. I can remove the load. I can look into the load terminals and determine a Thevenin resistance. Then I can replace the load with a short circuit and determine the short circuit current the ISC and the RTH will give me my Norton equivalent circuit. However, I've already essentially determined a Thevenin circuit for this circuit. It turned out to be VOC was 1.73 volts and RTH was 0.54 ohms. This is a voltage source in series with a resistance. I know from my source transformation theorem that I can automatically convert this to a current source in parallel with the same resistance, 0 0.54 ohms. This current I is ISC. ISC is equal to this voltage, VOC, over this resistance, RTH, which is 1.73 volts over 0 0.54 ohms, which is 3.2 amps. So if I take a 3.2 amp source, place that in parallel with a 0.54 ohm resistor, I have the Norton equivalent circuit for my circuit of example one. Once you've generated either the Thevenin circuit or the Norton equivalent circuit, you can get the other one directly from your previous result. You don't have to go back to ground zero. You can use a source transformation to get one from the other.